Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this grasshopper tutorial for beginners, I'm going to show you how you can make this uh, parametric solid in Grasshopper. As you can see here, I can change the height easily. The count, which I'm going to explain for the sections. The size and the thickness. So if I increase the number of count, this can be a good uh, parametric uh, solid for a vase or something like that. And as you can see here, I can make the solid in Rhino and use that in my project. So uh, let's get started from scratch and learn this step by step. Uh, okay, to make this in Grasshopper, uh, what I want to do here is to create a square, for example, like this and uh, make a linear array from that, for example, something like this, and then rotate uh, these uh, squares based on a dispatch, which I'm going to explain 45 degrees, like this. Uh, then we're going to make that into a loft, which can be a simple straight section loft. And then we're going to convert that into a mesh by adding extra faces, which I'm going to explain, and that we can use for example, the pufferfish plugin uh, mesh and offset mesh to create the thickness. So we can uh, solve this in different ways. Uh, one of the ways I want to teach you here is to use the curve and use a line SDL. You can actually do this in any uh, different ways. So I'm going to use a line SDL. There is a start. I'm going to right click and set this point to any point I want. The direction by default is in the Z direction, and I can give this a length. So let's give this a length. So I'm going to increase the length, as you can see here. This is going to be my total height. I'm going to use that here, okay? After creating the line, uh, I'm going to use the curve division perpendicular frames to create a series of perpendicular frames on this line. And let's say display, and we can say preview plane size, make this a little bit smaller or bigger. Okay, so you can change that here. And then for the count, I can say from one to maybe 12. One is going to create two of that because it's a, uh, somehow a division. And by increasing that, that's going to increase those planes. Okay, so after creating those frames or planes i'm going to say vector plane and rotation rotate plane so i'm going to rotate those planes and right click here for this one which is the angle i'm going to right click here and give it a degree as you can see here if i give any number slider to that it's going to rotate it around the z-axis okay so what we want to do here is to rotate this one with zero degrees stay that here uh, for this one, it's going to be 45 degrees. Again, this one is going to be zero and this one 45 degrees. Okay, so that's how uh, a pattern we are going to repeat. We can use it different ways of dispatching, but for this one, I can just simply double click and two forward slashes for a panel and say zero and 45 degrees. When you give two, uh, more than two data inside a panel, you have to be sure to right click and say multi-line data, okay? This has to be on so you can see this is uh, not a text and this is somehow going to be used in our project. So I'm going to zoom out so I can scale that a little bit and give that to here. As you can see here, this is going to rotate this one zero degrees, 45 degrees, and then uh, for the rest, it's going to repeat that number. So we need a repeating component and here we go set sequence repeat repeat this data and we can say how many uh number of repeating we want so here when we give this three it's going to give us four uh we can fix that by going to the set list and say list length and get the length of this, the number of frames we have here, which is going to be four and give that here. So that is going to give us exactly the same amount of rotation we want here. If you want to change that to another uh, number, uh, for example, you can say, I want maybe 23 degrees. 
I can say I delete this zero. Uh, I just keep the zero and add this with a shift key. So this is going to rotate those planes. And if I increase that, okay. So remember that you can either give this a static number or just add a slider to that. Okay. So after creating those planes, we are ready to create a rectangle. So I'm going to go to the curve primitive and use a rectangle here. And because it's from minus to positive, that is a domain, as you can see here, it means that it's going to start, uh, if this is the X axis, it's going to say from minus what to positive what, okay? So that's a domain. To create that, I'm going to make it a square. So let's go to the math, construct a domain. Because I want to make it a square, I'm going to give it to both X and Y. And because I want to control the size, I'm going to say from minus x divided by 2, that means the half of the negative, to half positive. So it's always going to have actually the same uh, thickness, uh, square size, as this number. So this slider is going to be square size. Give that to the both A and B to construct the domain and then give that here so you can see that we are constructing it here. Okay, after creating the squares, we have to go to surface and loft them together. As you can see here, it's a NURBS loft. Why not go to freeform loft options? You can download this example file from our website. So I'm going to just say, uh, type straight. Extract that here so you know that this is a straight lofting. That's going to be the uh, next part. This uh, What we want here are triangles and we can do that with a simple method. I'm going to go to the mesh utility and simple mesh that. That means that if it's a quad or a triangular face, it's going to convert that into a mesh. And now with mesh, we can do more, uh, we have more confidence to add details to that. So I can go to utility and add a uh, triangulate to this one. It means that I want triangular faces, not quads. And now you can see that we have this one, which is obviously exactly what we want. If you want to see it, you can also say display a custom preview to see that. And we're good to go for the edges. We can say mesh edges to see the edges. Okay. So that is going to be the creation of the mesh. So I can control the total height, the number of count, and the square size. If you want to, you can change that degree thing also. Anyway, now that we have that, because we want to close the bottom, I can go to list item, set list item, and pick up those rectangles. The first one is obviously the bottom. So we can, again, use the mesh utility, simple mesh to make that into a mesh. And now I can join those together. So mesh join, delete that. Join the triangulate to the bottom. Be sure that they are adding up. So it's one mesh now with the bottom. And then also, I usually use this utility mesh weld vertices. And the reason is it's going to decrease the number of vertices of the mesh. As you can see here, when I weld it, it's going to decrease the number of vertices and give you the minimal mesh possible, which is really ideal also for other plugins like Kangaroo and other things. So here you can see that this is like the cleanest mesh you can get. And now you can give thickness to that and work with it. For example, the Pufferfish plugin, which is really great, I always use. And use the mesh and offset mesh. I can give it a thickness to the distance. It's closed by default. And now I can make a custom preview for this one and also mesh edges. 
And if I bake that, you can see that this is going to be the final mesh with thickness. I can use maybe a clipping plane, vertical clipping plane, and move that around. Okay, so you can see that's completely solid, like this. If you want to convert that into a NURBS solid, what you can do here is to say, I usually use this technique, face boundaries, I get all of the face boundaries, I convert that into a surface, and then I use the surface erep join to join them together. That's also a cool technique you can use and you can get a NURBS solid. Now I can also use the BREP edge for seeing the edges and a custom preview to just see that as the final results. So there's a curve to put all of that here. And now we have control over it. So remember that you can give the thickness to this, the size, the number of planes and the height and create this parametric base or tower, whatever you want to use it. I think that's also ready for 3D printing. You use that in your project. Okay, I hope that this tutorial was useful. If you have any question, ask below. See you next time. Bye.